Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Joe. Skill trees allows the player to customize the character's abilities. During gameplay, you will get the skill point or experiment point which you can spend to unlock a new ability. From this episode, I'm going to start a new series about how to make the skill trees on Unity. Each episode will achieve several certain features about this project. Each episode lands well under 15 minutes for the best watching experience. In this series, we'll have a look at how to display the skill information on the UI cameras, how to unlock each skills, how to make the practical systems on UI cameras, etc, etc. Each episode completed project will be uploaded to my Google Drive, and you can start from any episode. In this series, we'll have a look at how to display each skill information when we click it. Now, let's get into the video. Okay, let's create one Unity 2D project. In this series, we will use several images for this project. You can go to my GitHub and download this assets folder. Actually, almost 90% of images are downloaded from the Unity Assets Store and other images are made it by myself. So feel free and check them out. I have opened up Unity and currently, we have nothing in here. Drag our resources folder into project. And that's pretty much all we need to do for setup. So, how do I get started? Let's first create one UI cameras and go to the cameras scaler script. Select the UI cameras mode to scale with screen size. It's proposed it to keep all UI elements, their positions and sizes can be specified according to the pixel of a specified reference resolution. For the reference resolution, we set to 1920 plus 1080. We can create one UI panel. I will call this UI panel skill tree panel. Then create one UI image. Set this UI image anchor to the left of the parent. This UI image will contain all of the UI skill buttons. Then drag our skill tree background image to his source image because I really don't want to use the default sprite and change his name. Now, we can create one new UI image and drag the skill tree map image to his source image. I have simply made one map by Adobe Illustrator. You can drag the handles or the edges of the rectangular to resize this map. In our case, I'm not concerned with the details graphics. After we complete all functions, we can go back and manually change each image. Now we start to create our skill images. Let's create one single skill button first and duplicate others. Create one UI image and drag one sprite to his source. Then resize this image, making sure our skill button size is matched with our skill tree map. We call this UI image skill 01. Under our skill 01 image, create another UI image as the child of this parent. This one is anchored to the skill body game object. Also, this UI image serves as a frame for our skill button, and this frame will also be a future in the next episode. Okay, we have completed the first skill image. We can just click our skill 01 group and press Ctrl or Command D on our keyboard to duplicate our skill 01 and change each position. Also, we need to have one player image on the top of the branch. Let's change each skill image and player image name. By the way, don't forget to drag different images to each skill's source image slot. After that, 
I will change to a little bit of dark background color. We want to edit and save all of the skill information from scripts. You can use Scripto object, which is a data container that you can use to save large amounts of data, independent of class instance. In this case, we just choose to a single class to achieve it. Let's create one C-sharp script called skill. Inside the skill script, we need skill name, skill sprite, skill description, Then, we have another public variable that is called isUpgrade. Really straightforward, when our skill is activated, these variables will turn into true. If we want to add new attributes of our skills, we can go back to here anytime and manually declare another variable. This script is responsible for declaring each attribute of the skill. It will be easy for us to edit each skill in the inspector. Now, we can go back to Unity and select all of the skills button. Add the skill script. We can add each skill information in the inspector. In the beginning, our default Boolean variable is upgrade turn into false because each skill is not upgrade yet. OK, it's time to customize your skills now. You can edit each information in the inspector or use some existing skills information by website and copy paste to the inspector for saving your time. Okay, we have added all of the information in their skill script. Let's create one new UI image as the child of our skill tree panel. Set this UI image encode to the right of the parent. We are going to build our display board. On the top of the panel is our skill point display text. On the center of the panel is our display board. All detailed skill information will be displayed on here, including selected skill image, description text, and his name text. On the bottom of the description image is one single upgrade button. When we click each skill on the left, we want their detailed information can be displayed on the right UI panel. Actually, each skill is one unique button in our game. However, the skill script only focuses on our skill information. Each time when we click the skills, the skill button will call one specified method to display their own information. So we can create one new c -sharp script called skill button. Since all of the skill information will be displayed on UI canvas, we need to use the UI namespace. We need our skill image display on here. Create one new image variable called skill image to hold a reference to the UI component on our UI image game object. Also, we created the skill name text, skill description text. Here, in order to distinguish each skill button, we declare one integer type variable called skill button ID. This variable will be assigned to a different number in the inspector. In our case, we have 11 skill buttons, which means our skill button ID starts from 0 to 10. Then, we create one public void method called press skill button. This method will be called when we press each skill. We want each skill information can be connected with our UI elements. How can we get it? Let's create one new C-sharp script called skill manager. And store all of the skills and the skill buttons type as an array. One important trick that I have declared one skill type variable called activate skill. We want to export these variables and make it visible in the inspector. So each time when we press certain skill button, this variable will be display which skill button we press now. We want each time we press the skill, 
skill image dot sprite is equal to to what? Let's see. If we press the second skill button, we want to display the second skill button skill component information. If we press the last skill button, we also want to display the last button his skill script. Remember, each skill button contains their unique skill information inside the skill script. And we already have stored all of the skills type in our skill manager script. Each skill button also have one button ID. We can access each skill information as long as we get the right button ID. Let's set the skill manager script as a singleton pattern because we want to access his public variables in other scripts. The singleton pattern is a way to ensure our skill manager script has only a single global accessible instance available at all times. So our image dot sprites is equal to skill manager dot instance to get access to the skills array. The index of the skills array is our button ID dot his skill sprite. We will store all of the skills inside the skill array from top to bottom, from left to right. Each button contains one ID and this ID number is the same order as the skill array. Also, we can continue to connect our skill name and the skill description to their UI elements. Remember, we have pretty clear one skill type variable called activate skill in the skill manager script. Its purpose is to keep track of which skill button is activate we are clicking. We can say skill manager dot instance dot activate skills. We cannot get access because we have to use public access modifier instead of private. Skill manager dot instance dot activate skill is equal to remember our activate skill type is skill type and our current script is the skill button which means this script is the skill button type so we have to use transform dot get component skill making sure each side are the same type Bend to unity select all of the skill buttons and add the skill button script we don't forget that we have several references in our skill button script so let's establish these connections as well. Each skill button has its own button ID. First button ID is 0, and then the second button ID is 1. The third button ID is 2, etc, etc. The button ID start from 0 because the index of elements in the array also is an integer with the first index being 0. Create one empty game object called skill manager in order to hold our skill manager script. Drag all of the skills type and the skill button type inside their array. Also, don't forget to call these methods on their button component. Select all of the skills at the button component. Since each skill button has their own button ID, we cannot select all of the buttons and drag the same skill button script inside an unclick event slot. For each skill button, we have to drag their own skill button script and select to the public press skill button method. Also, you can delete all of the skill buttons, only leave the first skill alone. If you edit the first one and then you can duplicate another, but you have to edit your skill information again. So I choose to spend a couple of seconds to drag each skill buttons to their unclick event.
When we press the play button, each click will display their own skill information on the right panel. We can go to the hierarchy and select our skill manager script. You will notice that the active skill button visible in the inspector. In the beginning, our active button is known, which means all of the skill buttons is inactivated. When we press one of the buttons, the active buttons has changed. This variable can be beneficial in a lot of ways because this variable can keep track of our current activate skill. In the next episode, we can get access to each skill's required upgraded skills through this variable. Finally, I will compress our current Unity project as one zip file and upload to my Google Drive. Since series will contain 4 or 5 episodes, I want each one can follow this tutorial in any episodes. Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next episode, we will unlock all of the skills and lock the skill button when we click it. I hope this series enhances your experience using Unity. I'm also looking forward to hearing what you think about. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. For more videos about Unity tutorials, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, and Game Design, you can click my profile and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.